Hey there lovelies, it's Stephanie from Oh You're Lovely where we carry the largest selection of wood flowers in the United States. We're gonna have a little bit of truth time today. Um, we are embarking on a series, we'll call it that, because it is, a um, chronicle, if you will. We haven't done this in a long time where it's a full bridal series, so that's exciting. Hopefully that'll uh, keep you um, intrigued enough to continue through with this video. But let's let's talk about um, the real talk of this, shall we? But before we do, I'm gonna open up this while we're chatting. That's fine. Now these um, color cubes are from Sarah Renee Clark. Hopefully I said that right. Um, she is a artist out of Australia and I pre-ordered these way back in July of 2022 and just got them in recently. And I thought these might be something that I need to jumpstart um, my funk, so to speak. Yes, I said funk, F-U-N-C. No, F-U-N-K. <laughs> if only our brains had an autocorrect that happened immediately. Anywho, funk. Yes, that's me. Um, and I haven't opened these yet, so this is really fun and satisfying. Oh, 2022, so glad you are gone. Good riddance, I shall say. I'm not speaking for everybody, but I think I'm speaking for a lot of people. Uh, it was the hardest year of my entire life. Not month, not week, not day year my family personally went through a lot of heartache and with that I really feel like I lost my way and I'm gonna try really hard not to cry those who know me really well know that I am a crier I cry when I'm happy I cry when I'm sad I cry when I'm angry I cry all the time um, but it, it, it has been a really rough uh, 365 days for sure and so I need to get out of it. And yes, all creatives and non-creatives, we all get in these like, just low down kind of feelings. I've never experienced it for as long as I have. And um, I'm making some major changes with my own mental health um, and the things that I do, but um, I'm a work in progress, just like everybody else. So I thought, did I order two of these? Maybe one. I can't remember now. I'll have to look at my thing. But I don't know if these are both exactly the same. If they are, I'm giving one to my teenage daughter. And if they're not, oh, that's volume one. Oh, okay, I think these are two different boxes. Does this say volume two? It does. Okay, so it comes with these like cute little stickers. Um, I'm gonna add the little numbers onto each of them so I know which one is which. And I'm gonna do that on the side. I think, let me see what these stickers look like. Any hoosies, back to the story. 2022, good riddance. Am I right? I know I'm right. All right, I'm gonna put my little sticker just wherever I want. Um, so yeah, I've been having a really hard time with my job, which is all about creativity. Um, I felt very burnt out. I felt very like, ah, I'm just not connected as much as I used to be. And that sucks. It sucks the joy out of everything I love about my job. So I figured what better way to jumpstart this new year than a whole new project, kind of pushing myself out of my comfort zone a little bit. And that's where these lovely cards come in. So as you can see, they're really cool. They're the physical, I believe she has a digital copy of this too, but I am a, a visual and a physical uh, tactile type person. So you pull a card and on one side, it gives you a visual picture and then the color story that goes with it. And then on the other side, it breaks down all of those colors, but doubly, it gives you gradients of all those colors too that will all play together as well. How cool is that? So my thought is, 
I grab one of these boxes, one or two. We'll maybe move them around until I'm with my eyes closed. And then we're going to grab just one card. Maybe we'll grab, I take that back. So I'm not so much out of my comfort zone. Let's grab three cards. So, or four, let's grab four, two out of each. There, that makes it easier. I gotta just see, does this tell me if it was in box two or not? That's 250, that's 500. So I think box one ends at 250. Oh, it gives you instructions too. Fun, fantastic. Let me see here, this starts at 251, yeah. So 250 cards in each of these sets. So we're gonna grab two out of each box. And then, and I haven't even looked at any of them, and then we're gonna go to the uh, craft store and pick out the paint. And we're gonna do an entire series, a bridal series. Using those colors, I'm gonna create all of the different items, not all of them, but some of the most common items that you would use in a wedding. So we're talking bridal bouquet, bridesmaid, boutonnieres, corsages, hair pieces, um, what else? A centerpiece maybe, an arch, all of the stuff, or some of the stuff. We'll just kind of see where this takes us, but it will be at least a month long type of compilation. We're gonna use all sorts of different words for this. <laughs> Four weeks of different um, projects, and we'll see where we go from there. Maybe it'll be two months worth of these. I don't know. I won't know until we really are in the, in the thick of it, so to speak. So, all right, enough chit-chatting about the project. Let's pick these cards. My eyes are closed. And we're gonna pick two. Here we go. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. Ooh, oh man, I wish it was the other one that I put in the box. Okay, here are our color options. Well, that one's pretty sweet, being that it's got tulips on there. So here are, that would be a really cute spring or summer bouquet. So this one, this one is slightly tempting because of the brown. I don't normally use brown in a piece. We have blue, which if you are new around here, you'd have no idea. But if you're an OG, my hair might tell you, um, I love pink and I struggle with blue. And that's a lot of blue. And then the last one. Now this would, if I picked this one, which I probably won't, I would go very heavy on the greenery, so we had all those greens, and I would just focus on the the, the ready orange and browns, but I'm not really loving that. Now, just in case, I don't know what I filmed or not. Here are the two that were two that were stuck that I set to the side. I really kind of wish I would have grabbed that one. I might have done that. But that are I I set the rules and I'm gonna follow the rules because I am a rule. Um, followers so all right so I am I'm debating between these two um, I'm not gonna do the blue and I'm not gonna do the browns it's just they're just not my not my jam funny enough those came both from box two all right I am interested to hear what you would have picked if you had pulled those four cards which ones would you do um, Oh goodness, they are very close. That really bright yellow is gonna be interesting. Okay, so let's look at the other side as far as the color variants. I can get like a, a dirty yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the card I pick with me and then pull paint from that. Hmm. 
I have been drawn to purple a lot lately, but Oh, this is tough. Do we do, I mean, if we do this and we need the brown, we could do bark flowers, which I hardly ever use bark flowers in a piece. And slightly cheating in some ways because I'm not dyeing the flowers, but you know what? We haven't done anything with bark lately. I don't know that I've ever made a bridal bouquet that had bark flowers in it. Okay, final answer. This is the card. So now we gotta scoot, go to the craft store, pick out paint that matches up to these. These cards are really nice too because it also gives you um, the, whatchamacallit, code. Like if you're doing digital art and you wanted to pull the colors, it gives you the actual whatever uh, color code thing that you, words, you know what I'm talking about hopefully and if you don't, then it's not important. <laughs> but anyway, this is our, this is our card. So I'm gonna be working off of these colors, but also possibly the um, other variations that they give. Or what we'll do is we'll get like the main color and then I'll get white and black to either darken it up or lighten it up. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. So here we go. I have my marching orders and most likely we'll be using bark flowers for that brown color. Um, but we'll see, maybe, maybe I'll dye some flowers brown. Sophia looks like a opened up, um, pine cone when you do that so maybe another option can you tell I'm procrastinating to go to the store okay enough of that I'm going let's go I think we did it. <clears throat> I think we did it. So as a reminder, here are the colors we were going for. Here are the colors I grabbed. Let's go through each one. So the brown, which is called chestnut. I will be using from Deco Art Americana, the color espresso. For the purple, this is from Anita's, and it's the color purple. Easy enough. On the card, it's called ultraviolet. Next color, orchid on the card, is vivid violet from Deco Art Americana. Now this was kind of more on the lighter side, if you like kind of in the middle. This is the one that I might have to pop just a little bit of that purple in there to to work it through. The next color on the card is called Rose Tan and this is Vintage Pink from Deco Art Americana. And then the final one is called Metal Lark on the card. Move my fingers. And this is from Delta Creative Ceramic Coat. The color is called sea moss. So as I was kind of going through all of the colors and especially this green, I was like, what can we do? What we're going to do? Well, son of a gun. I might change my mind right now as I'm filming this. So originally I was thinking succulents and duh. Put some succulents in there. Now I'm... I just thought of, I believe they're called the Bells of Ireland. And I pulled a flower called Dolly that kind of reminds me of the Bells of Ireland. Now I know the Bells of Ireland are like a stalk and have like flowers, you know, coming attached to them up. But I have these really like 
ruffly, just beautiful little flowers. I love this style flower so much. Again, it's called Dolly. I'm thinking mixing Dolly with the sea moss will give a feeling of the Bells of Ireland in this. And I definitely have been grabbing greenery that's more on a yellow tone, which we'll get to that in a second. We'll go through the greenery. Then we'll go through the flowers I picked up, picked up, pulled from over here. And then I've got to make a decision. Maybe, well, you know what I'll probably do is I'll dye both of them. Cause I grabbed flowers too that I really like for succulents. I mean, we'll grab both. And then at the time of construction, we'll make a final decision. I'm gonna to try to grab a couple more dollies though so that I can paint them in one of the other colors as well. Um, so I've gotta go search in all of the bins. Lesson learned from me, if you ever have more than a couple handful of style flowers, if you're kind of growing a, a wood flower collection, which we definitely recommend. <laughs> My other recommendation is to keep them in individual bins or label, like only put three different styles in one bin and label each of them so you know the different names of the flowers so that you can reorder them easily. And don't be like me and just have it as a free for all in all of your buckets because you will spend more time searching for a flower than really, you guys, think, wait, work smarter, not harder. I'm working harder. <laughs> so learn from me. Okay, I'm gonna go grab, I'm gonna go dig for some more dollies um, and I'll be right back to show you the greenery and then the flowers we're gonna work with. All right, greenery time. Now, the only thought I had in my head before I headed out to the paint store was that I wanted to use Italian Ruscus. I love this greenery so much. We carry it in the shop. We have it in multiple different kind of styles. And the reason why I love this greenery so much is it's like a unicorn. It will go with blue-green undertones, but it also plays really well with um, yellow-green undertones. I don't know if I'm using those words right. So I definitely wanted to go with this because then anything else that I wanted to like, whichever direction I want to go with, I knew this would go with anything and I also want it to be my main filler so I'm gonna have a bunch of this but then I um, wandered around the lovely uh, um, hub lob and I, I haven't really buffed up or beefed up my stash of greenery and I wanted in my head I was like I'm gonna go for a wild kind of look so here are some of the supporting rolls of greenery if you will that we're gonna work with let me grab them all I don't need to show you. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Um, so we have this like leafy, ferny guy, and I'm going to need to individually take all of these off. So we'll show you how to prep those. And I grabbed a few of those. Then we also have like this asparagus fern kind of piece. Again, I was going for real wild stuff. And again, this will be individually probably stemmed up. Yeah, so I'll show you how to do that. We've got some baby's breath, faux baby's breath, which we do also carry in the shop. This is a slight more cream than the one we carry. The one we carry is a nice bright white, um, but very similar flower style. So I grabbed those as well because we're gonna do all color for the wood flowers. Um, so I definitely wanted to bring in some cream that way. Then we've got a, a faux eucalyptus. The reason why I grabbed this was because of the yellow undertones that are playing around with everything else. And then I thought could be fun to also throw in some faux artificial silk flowers. Um, these are, I think irises are meant to look like irises. I don't know if it says it on here. They look like irises to me. I could be wrong though. So. You can always let me know in the comments, but I only grabbed a couple of those. These I'm planning on using only in the bridal bouquet. All the rest of the greenery will be kind of um, sprinkled in through everything, but that one is going to go for sure in the bridal. And then there, see, see, magical unicorn. It just goes with freaking everything. 
I love it so much. So there is the greenery. We're going to prep all of this in just a little bit. But first, before we do that, let's go back over to that wall. Back over, you haven't even met over there. Let's go over to the wall and pick out some flowers, shall we? Yes, we shall, let's do this. It's flower time. Okay, so we talked about Dolly a little bit ago. So we are gonna work with some Dollies. I only was able to find one larger Dolly. And don't let this flower fool you because I think when you see it, sometimes it's like, my gosh, that's squished and all funky. It is sometimes, it's just how it's made. But once you dip dye it, or even if you just put, like if you wanted to keep it its beautiful cream color, just spritz it down with a little bit of water, you can reshape them so easily. So we've got Dollies, still to be determined if they're gonna be Possibly Bells of Ireland, possibly just like a beautiful rose. The next one I grabbed is Charlotte and she features a thistle center. Um, the When you dip dye these, the thistle kind of repels all of the paint so that brown center is gonna stay. So I'm gonna use that kind of at my advantage of that brown color we had going. I'll probably do this, I'm thinking maybe in the pink kind of color, maybe. Then I have Harvest Rose. And this again, too, brown. So it has, we're gonna do a two-tone kind of color. So I have that brown and then one of the other colors that we're gonna mix with that. So we've got a couple of those. Um, this is only gonna be in the bridal bouquet, possibly, if I decide to put it in there. So I was looking for more brown stuff. I did buy the brown paint, but I just, it hurts everything in my body to dye a flower brown. I don't know why. So we do have the protea in the bark. Um, that would be all brown. And then I might dip dye it in the brown paint just to darken up some of like, you can see there is some cream peeking through just how these are made. Um, they're made with the skin of the Shola plant and sometimes it doesn't get all the way covered. And the cream will take the dye, the rest of it will repel. So it'll stay this multi-toned brown, lovely. Then for the succulents, if we go that direction, I grabbed two different style flowers. I grabbed Miss Ivy and, whoops, Dahlia, which both of these I absolutely love as um, succulents. Word left my brain for two seconds there. Okay, next flower, a ruby. I wanted a flat flower for some reason, more of a, you can shape this a little bit once it's um, in the water and stuff as well, but it has that really cute big palm center debating, maybe we'll take that chartreuse kind of green, that sea moss color, and put it in there. I don't know yet, but these petals do give a really good base, and they're wider to do like two-toned effects and things like that, so these will be fun to play with. I did grab our tried and true, and probably the uh, top favorite flower of all of our customers, and that's American Beauty. I grabbed her in a couple different sizes. So for colors, I still haven't decided, typically what I do is a single style flower gets a single style, like a color. I might like split it 50-50 um, and do two different colors or like with the, the rubies, if I'm gonna do like two tones and things like that, I might have some that are solid and some are two-toned, but for the most part, I don't grab all of the flowers and just dye them all at one, one color. I, each style flower gets a different color. It's typically what I do. All right, then I grabbed Alice, and this fun story, fun story about the name of this one, which I'm gonna try not to cry. This is named after my grandma. My grandmother passed away recently. Um, so I really need a hug from her. I miss her so much. So this is my chance to just give her a, a quick little hug in my own way. So Alice is there. Woo. Okay, and then we've got, anytime I mention her name, I always start tearing up and crying. Um, we have two different tiny little guys. I do like to sprinkle in some smaller flowers um, for everything that I do as fillers. So we've got Paris, teeny tiny little Paris. And then we have Enchanted. And these are the one and a half inch size flowers. So we've got those two to sprinkle in. And again, I'll pick one color and I'll dye them all that one color. 
Now, let's chat real fast. Um, actually, you know what? We'll chat about flower sizes and like how many flowers you need because that is asked a lot. We have a, a lovely blog uh, that we wrote up years ago about that, but let's dive into that in just a second. We'll dive into that while I'm dyeing flowers. I think we'll, we'll dye the flowers first because we gotta wait for them to dry for 24 hours. So we'll do that first. And then while those are drying, we'll work on um, getting all of the greenery stemmed up because that takes a long time. So, all right, that's the plan. Meet me here in two seconds. I forgot to mention I bought four of each of the colors. That should be enough to dye all the flowers that we're gonna need, but oh, you never know. The recipe, if you will, for the solution to dye your flowers is I like to do a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to water. So I'm gonna put all of this paint in here, or as much as I can. And then I do add glycerin into my mix to keep the flowers soft after they dry, because paint can tend to make them a little bit more brittle. I eyeball this, but it used to be when I measured it, it was basically an eight to one. So eight parts paint to one part glycerin. If you add too much glycerin, it will make your flowers feel like this wet squishy that never dries. It's a weird feeling. And if you add too much glycerin, there's not that I've found yet a solution to like thin it out. So you're best to go easy on the glycerin and then add more if necessary. You can also take a bottle of water, add some glycerin to that, like a little spritzer, and spritz your flowers once they're fully dry to soften it up a little bit. That might have been too much water. Good thing we have more bottles if it is. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Make sure to mix it up really, really well. And I have other. Uh, I think. I think we'll be okay. But let's see. I forgot we need something to dry our flowers on. So I, uh, I always use egg cartons because I have a literal mini army of children and we go through a lot of eggs, so I have a ton of these. But you can also use things like puppy pads. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I don't know how it's picking up on camera. I think it looks yellow on camera, but it definitely got that like chartreuse green going on. Very fun. Okay, so that one's good to go. I'm gonna start dip dyeing these. But anyway, you can also use puppy pads, um, egg cartons. The only thing I would say if you're gonna, for anything, after about like 15 to 30 minutes, grab, um, just kind of move them around on whatever you're laying them on to dry on so that there's no paint that's settling on like a certain side of the leaves or pooling at all or getting stuck. And then let them sit there for about 24 hours and they should be dry and ready to stem up. Now I'm going to dye a bajillion flowers. While I do though, let's chat real quick about the quantities of flowers that you need for different things. I'm gonna grab our handy dandy blog post because um, I'll forget something as I do. So let's start with the bridal bouquet. Now, one caveat of sorts when it comes to this is remember that these are suggestions. These are not tried and true, like you must follow this or you're doing something wrong. That's not how we, that's not how we operate around here. But it is definitely, it's going to depend on the type of bouquet you want, how large or small, um, all sorts of different, like if it's gonna be more of a cascade versus a posy bouquet versus a more traditional round bouquet. Lots of different things will make you decide how many flowers you need. So with that in mind, for a bridal bouquet, we do suggest 
between 30 to 50 flowers. Most of those are gonna be two, two and a half inch size, but you're gonna to wanna to sprinkle in some one and a half inch and three, flower, three inch flowers, which is what I've got going on here. Mostly two, two and a half inch flowers. Um, I did not grab any three inch flowers. And I think for this one, the reason being is I have a special flower that I'm gonna be using just in the bridal bouquet. Um, so that's gonna be my kind of special little nod with the bridal bouquet. If you're looking to make a difference between your bridal bouquet and your bridesmaid bouquet, a larger flower will definitely do that for you. Then for the bridesmaid bouquet, it's gonna be smaller, unless you don't want it to be. Again, it's your day, do what you want. Um, and those are going to be 20 to 30 flowers, again, mostly two, two and a half inch, and a sprinkling of one and a half inch flowers. I like those again for like a filler kind of situation. So the groom's boutonniere is one two and a half inch flower and one two or one and a half inch flower. You don't need a lot of flowers for the boutonnieres. You don't want them too, too big. Otherwise they're gonna be sagging. Um, I think for this one though, you guys, I love pocket square uh, boutonnieres. And I think that's what we're gonna have to make for this one. I just love them so much. Then you don't have to deal with like pins and all that fun stuff. Um, for the groomsmen boutonnieres, just one two and a half inch flower. So again, you wanna make some distinctions between the um, bridal cup, uh, couple and then their uh, people that are standing up. For a wrist corsage, one two and a half inch wood flower and then three to four one one and a half inch flowers so you've got one big kind of centerpiece flower and then you've got some others to like flank it and be its what's the word i'm looking for that's like uh supporting roll sure <laughs> for let's see centerpieces so these are going to be this is really really very much um, take it with a grain of salt. Um, there's a lot that can um, change with this depending on the centerpieces that you want. But we see that on average you use about 20 wood flowers, mostly in the two, two and a half inch size with a few three and one and a half inch sprinkled in there. And that, let's see here. Then we've got the arch swag. And we have here, again, this is gonna be a range, and again, really gonna matter how full you wanted it with flowers and some other things. So we've got seven to 15 of the two, uh, seven to 15 wood flowers. I would still say probably in that two, two and a half inch range um, for every two to three inches per foot of the arch. That's gonna matter. And again, it's gonna matter how full you want it to be. Um, and then the last thing we do have on this is floral crowns, if you're interested in making one of those. And you'll need about eight to 10 of the one and a half to two and a half inch for a fuller band, and then only three to five solo of flowers if you just want kind of like a statement piece of like floral and the rest is greenery. So there you have it. And as we chatted through that, I got all of the green, the metal lark color of our card done. Um, well, I say that and I still have a couple more dollies, but here's kind of that, do you see where I'm going with the thought of the Bells of Ireland? It's not quite as green as the Bells of Ireland. It's got more of that yellow tone to it, but could be fun. Now, the one thing to note, and you'll see this once we come back after these fully dry, the paint is gonna come a little bit darker than what it is right now. At least that's what I'm thinking. Also have a paint um, brush on hand so that you can get into the crevices of your flowers. If you see any cream poking through that you don't want poking through, this is the time to touch those up. I'm also, why don't we grab one of these and we'll grab, we'll grab the uh, Vivid Violet. We're gonna tip some of these flowers with this purple-ish color to give some dimension to those succulents. So we'll do that now. And then after that, I'll probably dip dye all of the solid colors and when we get to playing around and two-toning some of them, I'll film that for you guys as well. Whew, we, we got a lot going on here, don't we? 
Okay, so we're going to dip dye a few of these and we'll see how those go. Maybe we'll dip dye or we'll um, hand paint the dahlias in particular. And we'll keep all of the Miss Ivies the way they are. I go in with straight paint. I'm gonna grab some of that purple too. Yeah, and the pink, why not? I always go in just with straight paint because we're gonna, oh no. That's not ideal. This one might be bad. Oh, all the way through. Done me dirty. Done me dirty, Hobby Lobby. Hold on. I'll be back. Do you see that? Ick. Ick. I got my bag of paint down here. Let's see. As I'm shaking this up, I'm hearing a little bit of noise. Oh, seriously? Again. I bet it stinks too. No, oh, not that bad. That's good at least. Oh, okay, this one. I think we're good on this one. Oh, no. Oh, no. This one might. I'm smelling it. I can't tell. I'm like shaking all over the thing. Let's see. Ugh. Are you kidding me? Let's see if any of these are good. We'll have a very small sprinkling of the pink flowers throughout. Okay. I don't, I can't. Ugh. Ick. Mm. All right, we'll try. That's disappointing. Okay. Huh. Any hoosies. The other thing, if you're going to be, like I, what I like to do when I'm blending is I have a little bottle of water on hand. Now these flowers are still wet. You could do this while they're still damp or you can wait till they fully dry and then go in with your other colors. It's just gonna depend on the type of saturation that you want. And I'm gonna do a couple at a time. And before the paint fully dries, because acrylic paint tends to dry pretty quickly, we're going to spray that down. And then with my fingers, I like to rub the paint through. Okay, so there's that. But now let's try instead these three. We're gonna go straight in with the we're gonna wet them down first and then put the paint on and we'll see how, eh, those aren't really dripping all that much different. Sometimes if you have them like super saturated, the color just kind of rolls down. Okay, so I'm just gonna lighten those up a little bit. Now this is shading to be more of like an orange color, which I'm not loving all that much. So we're gonna grab another one in a second. And um, see what the other colors do. I'm gonna ease them in like that. I mean, it's very pretty. It's just not the color story that we've got going on, right? Go just real close onto the tips of these and I think what I'll do instead of blending these out we're gonna keep this just on the tips and see how it dries and we're gonna do the purple this time Be a little bit heavier handed 
on the amount of purple that I'm putting right though at the tip of the flower. put in my purple have the blended out it's going down but the top being still that really deep purple so I'm gonna keep working on these oh the pink oh maybe we'll do the pink right away I'm very not super thrilled about this one but we'll give it a go I'm gonna start from the bottom so we're going underneath Whenever I get like a torn petal, it happens. Um, I either cut it to shape or I just pull that off. And you could, I think, the way that these are coming, just leave it as is and not have to spray down the, with the water, but you can if you want to too, as well as being able to kind of smush around the coloring. I'm kind of liking where this is going, even though it took me four paint bottles to find paint that wasn't <sighs> chunky and gross. It's a little disappointing. Okay, there's that one. Now I will finish. We'll just do pink on this one, but we'll go the opposite direction on it. This is the time to really play, especially with succulents, you can really play and see what um, fun color combinations you can come up with. We do have a couple YouTube tutorials already on succulents because they're just so stinking cute and fun to make and are super popular. Okay. Our succulents, for the most part, are done. We're gonna let these all dry. I'm gonna dip dye all the rest of the flowers and we'll come back in just a little bit. And while these are drying, we'll stem up. <laughs> What's going on? Stem up all of the greenery. <laughs> that is how I feel. I almost wore the same uh, sweatshirt that I did earlier in this you don't know how many days it's going to take me to film this. It's going to take me a couple of days. And um, tis the season for uh, winter blues and me wearing the same thing for days in a row. But it had a stain on it, so I figured I shouldn't. That was the only reason. <laughs> Hashtag self-care. I don't know. But, anyway, it's time to stem up all the greenery. The flowers are looking lovely. Um, I will show you those in just a little bit. So first greenery we're gonna start with is this lovely Italian Ruscus. This particular type of greenery does slide right off. So it has like this little um, hole. There it is, a little hole in there. So I'm gonna take a wire, slide it through, crimp it. And I'm gonna do that for every single individual <laughs> leaf. So that'll be fun. The rest of these, and it probably is going to depend on each one. I haven't looked at them overwhelming. So this one, um, this one has holes through it, but I might, I might do something a little bit different with this one. I still have to decide. Um, the other ones I believe are all what uh, we lovingly refer to as a cup situation. Maybe. No, these don't have anything. These are all just wired. Shoot, son of a gun. Is this a cup? Nope, that goes straight through. Can I not show you guys what a cup one looks like? Not on any of the greenery that I'm going to use. So let me go find you a, a one so you can see it, and then I would tell you how we, I would normally work with that in case that's what your greenery looks like. So I'll be back. What I mean when I say cup 
is it doesn't go all the way through. It stops right there, stops right there. So in that situation, what I would do is grab myself a wire, put a little dab of glue right on the, the tip of it like I do when I'm stemming flowers and slide it in let it dry and it'll be good to go. There's no glue on it right now, so it's floating all over the place. But once you have that little dot of glue, good to go. But I won't be doing that. I will be pinching like nobody's business <laughs> today. That wasn't a phrase I thought I would use today, but it it has happened. It has happened. All right, let's get to the, let's get to all the pinching, shall we? I think when I was dyeing the flowers, I had made some sort of comment about like I didn't have any three inch flowers. That's not true. I do. The um, a harvest rose, wood rose, those are three inch ones. So I have those and I remember too also I was like only one style flower, only a, a different color. Yeah, I also lied about that. I did <laughs> the peachy pink, the purpley pink and the purple purple all in these but then what I did is the peach and the purpley pink one in the centers I swapped their colors into the centers so there's some carryover on those as well and then just to show you some of the like here's the Alice's I just did two different kinds with those I did take some of the dollies and dye them the purple color and again here are the ones with that chartreuse kind of green and you know what as i'm touching these it's been over 24 hours but some of them are still a little bit wet on their bottoms so i will um i don't like stemming flowers when they're wet in any way because the glue just doesn't stick the right way so i'm going to start stemming up some of these but i'm going to have to wait to finish stemming them for another uh, day or two to stem the flowers speaking of which let's go through that real fast um, and then I'm gonna do the rest off camera. You don't have to watch me stem up all of these flowers. But to stem the flowers, it's very easy. Finding one that doesn't feel wet on the bottom. Wow, son of a biscuit. What's going on? Okay, this one's good. All right, so there's the flower. And we're going to, I like to do what I call a pre-hole. So I'm gonna stick my stem in first, make a little hole so I know where I'm gonna be putting the wire back in. Grab a little bit of hot glue, slide it back in, give it two seconds, and you've stemmed a flower. Now I'm gonna do that 103 times again. I don't know how many actually flowers I dyed. It might not even be 100, or it could be over. We'll see. But I'm gonna get to the, 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 the I'm gonna get to all of this, and I think this will be the wrap up of the first video. Probably the prep work. The prep work will be the wrap up. Probably. But stay tuned, you'll find out real fast. I think I think mission accomplished as far as the colors and the color story card. I feel like I I feel like we, we aced that. Again, that brown though. 
I, I kind of omitted the brown. We do have, though, again, the protea. That might get added in there. Or not. There's some brown still. I take that back. There's a little bit of brown in some of those flowers. So, I'm... Yes? Greenery is ready at, to go. So I think today we're gonna just wrap this up right now and call this video done. We're gonna just say it was the, um, the prep work video. I think that sounds good. So then next week, come on back. I think I'm gonna start with the bridal bouquet. That's typically how I like to do things um, when doing a project like this. Cause that really sets the tone for everything else I feel like. Yeah, yeah. So, but I might surprise you. So you'll have to tune in next week to see what um, is decided upon. But that note, I, words are really hard all of a sudden. <laughs> all right, let's wrap this up, shall we? Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got a little bit, just a couple little nuggets of wisdom in there as well. If you're loving this channel, can't get enough, want to know the next time we post a video, which is typically on Wednesdays, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. I'm afraid I'm going to knock over these flowers. They're getting real close to me. If you want to learn about the 150 style solo wood flowers, along with craft supplies and greenery, go to oyourlovely.com. But before you do, let me grab you something. Use the code YouTube30 to get 30% off your first order. All right, you guys, as I noted or stated or said, words. I will see you next week for another tutorial, most likely a bridal bouquet. Or not, maybe I'll surprise you. Well, you'll just have to wait and see. The anticipation must be killing you. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Stephanie from Oh You're Lovely. Peace out. Yo, bye.